Well, joining us now is Frenak Viacorka. He's a former journalist who's now an advisor to the opposition. He joins us from Vilnius, Lithuania. Thanks so much for being here, Frenak. Really appreciate you taking the time. I, I just want you to give us your reaction to the events as they've unfolded over the last 24 hours. Uh, it's shocking. Uh, after yesterday, no one no one can feel safe anymore, neither in Belarus nor in the European Union. Yesterday, when I was talking to Raman, uh, he shared his concern about possible um, uh, people or spies who were following him. I didn't believe him. I thought, oh, perhaps he's very cautious. But later, a few hours later, we found out that that was the part of the whole operation in order to detain, to arrest, to capture him. Unfortunately, we don't know where is he right now. We are in touch with his parents. We are trying to, to organize lawyer for him. But uh, I, I, I'm afraid to think about what, what they do to him. Because usually, uh, not detention is the worst, but what's happening after detention, the interrogation. They're trying to get so much information from him. They're trying to put pressure on him. They're trying to force him to, to admit in all crimes he never committed. And I, I, I will be making all possible in order to release him and all other political prisoners. Wow. So, Raman, you've been in contact with him and you continue to be. So I was in touch with him until until everything happened, until this incident in the airspace that uh, did take place. We knew that his girlfriend is also arrested. And I think here Lukashenko's regime showed its nature. They are not they do not care about international norms, rules, standards. They are ready to violate all possible uh, laws in order to persecute their opponents. But also it shows that Lukashenko hates journalists, reporters, bloggers because they tell the truth and they give people alternative information. Yeah, Fernand, we were going to ask you about that. I mean, why, why, Lukash why would Lukashenko go to such drastic lengths to uh, detain this journalist? I mean, he potentially is putting the lives of 171 of the passengers who were on board at risk. But um, why take such drastic steps, do you think? Exactly, exactly. Uh, he captured the plane with 170 hostages in order to arrest 26 years old guy, the blogger from the internet. It's insane. Why he does this? Perhaps he wants to show the power. He wants to show that he is in control. Perhaps he wants to show his attitude to the international rules, to the Western community. Like, look, I don't care what you think. You will, you can't do anything to me. I can do what, whatever I want. If I want to stop your plane, commercial jet. I will take my fighter jets and I will do whatever I want. So I think uh, this is also the result of impunity and lack of international action. Because during last week, we had the biggest internet portal was closed to the BY. Uh, the political activist Vitoly Tashurak was murdered in the prison. And finally, Roman Protasevich yesterday detained in the airspace. So this is the result of impunity. And international community is also responsible for, for, for what's happening in Belarus right now. So immediate action needed. So what do you want the international community to do, Fernak? What do you want to see? First of all, international investigation. What really happened in the airspace in Belarus? Second, to punish all perpetrators. Lukashenko, his cronies, all those involved in special operation, including KGB agents who were accompanying uh, Raman on, on that um, uh, flight. We want uh, sanctions on companies, businesses, uh, oligarchs who are financing the regime and financing the violence against peaceful protesters. We want international conference on crisis resolution, because all the reaction on this, uh, uh, on this X incident um, yesterday, it's not enough. We must understand that this is the part of the wider, broader humanitarian political crisis. We need to get Belarus to new free and fair elections. And this high-level conference with Rapp, with Johnson, with uh, Merkel, with Macron, with the Kurds, they all together must gather at one place and to discuss how to solve Belarus crisis. Because at this moment, it's not domestic crisis of one European country. This is the crisis which harm the whole European security. And Fernak, how how do we how does that happen? I mean, what is it that the opposition and and your um, colleagues? I know you work with Svetlana. Uh, you're the senior advisor with her. Um, what is it that you guys want to see done now? I mean, how how do we prevent something like this from happening again? We already discussed today. We have to uh, strengthen our security. Uh, we realize that we are followed everywhere, not only in Belarus and even being in Lithuania, in European Union, we can't feel safe. 
I think uh, all of us should take specific uh, additional measures in order to save our uh, equipment, computers, smartphones. Uh, we have to be very careful when, when traveling and to avoid traveling over Belarusian airspace. And in general, we must revise um, uh, our, our approach, our, our rules, our standards, not only security protocols, but in general our activities. Because from today, from yesterday, Lukashenko is not just another dictator. He is the terrorist who is uh, capturing um, commercial airplanes. And we should uh, position Lukashenko on the international arena in such way. He usurped the power, he captured the plane, he put lives of hundreds of people in danger. Are you concerned that stepped up sanctions from the EU and potentially action from the international community could drive Belarus closer to Russia? And, and why is that a concern? I, I don't think so. We made analysis, we checked, there is no uh, real arguments to speak that sanctions will force Belarus to Russia. Belarus is already in Russian hands, very dependent on Russian economy. 50% of trade is uh, with Russia. So additional sanctions on the specific branches, such as oil uh, products or potash, will not uh, uh, put Belarus closer to Russia. It's already very, very close. But these sanctions, specific targeted sectorial sanctions, will eliminate, will, will cut sources of funding for Lukashenko and his cronies. It's very important to send the right signal to Belarusian society that the violence will not stay unpunished.